or what we would call the. So again, these are the metatarsal heads, and then these are the bases of the metatarsal here. So you'd have what's called like a drop metatarsal head, where these other ones are dropped in the middle, and the person may have a callus right there. Okay. And then on orthotics, you see what's what's towards the front of the orthotics, what's called a metatarsal pad. And it looks something like this. And that's basically going to be placed right here. So it's going to help support that arch. Okay. And so what kind of motion happens at the, the uh, ankle? Plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. Uh, you do have some inversion, eversion, but actually that doesn't really happen here at the ankle mortis joint. It happens down below under the subtalar joint. Okay, so that's going to be subtalar, meaning underneath the talus. So an <coughs> eversion happens underneath here. Because this talus is pretty much locked in into the ankle mortis. There's not really a lot of inversion, eversion that happens there. It's going to be more at the subtalar joint and also into the forefoot. And I think I have a slide where you divide the foot into that's on the anatomy part. Okay, you have what's called the the rear foot, which is going to be the calcaneus and the tail is here. And then you have the midfoot, which is the other tarsal bones here. Then you have the forefoot, which would be the metatarsals going forward. And then, again, this is talking about the ankle mortis joint, so that's where you have the plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. Okay. So then loose back position is going to be 10 degrees of plantar flexion. As you plantar flex forward, that more narrow in the back, so that's going to make it a little more of a loose, looser position. Okay? Versus close pack is going to be maximum dorsiflexion. Again, because the anterior part of the tail is, so the more you dorsiflex it up like that, the more tighter it's going to be in the joint. And so then here, like I said before, is that the subtalar joint is where you have inversion and eversion. So loose pack position for the subtalar joint is going to be between inversion and eversion. And then close pack is going to be inversion and supination. And we'll talk a little bit more about supination and pronation. talked about the bones. Right? So again, we're talking about inert tissue. First you start with the bones and then the different joints. Obviously there's a lot of different joints in between all of these individual bones of the feet. There's all these different gliding joints here. Okay? And then next we'll talk about ligaments. Okay? And if you don't have the, there is a handout that has all the abbreviations. You guys have, have talked about that before, right? Three letter acronyms. Okay. So ATF is anterior talofibular. So we're talking about on the lateral side. So that's going to be, that's going to go between the talus and the fibula. And if you have, if you call one anterior, why would you do that? Because there's a posterior back here. Okay. So. So here is the anterior talofibular right here. Okay. So that's this one right here. That's the one that's most commonly sprained when you sprain your ankle. Okay. And the posterior talofibular is going to be the one on the back here that you can see from this side here. So it goes from the, attaches to the talus and the fibula. Posterior talofibular, anterior talofibular, and then what's this one going to be? Well, what two bones is it attached? Yeah, so it's not talofibular anymore. Calcaneofibular. So that's what. So make sure if you don't 
I know what those abbreviations are. You might want to write those in. And then on the medial side, all these ligaments together are just referred to as the deltoid ligament. And that's going to be good enough for this class as well. we we'll talk about the deltoid ligament. Because it's shaped, basically delta is triangle, right? If you know your Greek, Greek alphabet, it's basically a triangle. So here's the top part of it, and then it fans out like that on the medial side. So actually, when I had that injury with my knee, I actually didn't realize until later that I also sprained my deltoid ligament. Because my foot was going out like that. And these other actual ligaments are going to have individual names based on the bones that they attach to. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to call this the deltoid ligament. Right? And then you have, on the anterior side, you have the joint capsule that goes across this. So again, a lot of times when we're talking about a lot of different joints, you have some ligaments that are thickenings of the actual joint capsule. Like when we talked about the shoulder, some of those ligaments were actually just part of the joint capsule that just had thickenings in it. In this case, in the ankle, you do have some distinct separate ligaments, but you do also have a joint capsule that goes around the whole thing. And then you have the anterior inferior talofibular, I mean a tibiofibular ligament. So that's this one here. Remember what I was just talking about when you have a high ankle sprain? That's what happens up here. Okay? And again, it happens with forced dorsiflexion at the ankle. It separates the tibia and the fibula, and it's going to injure that anterior inferior tibiofibular ligament. Okay? Then we have another one here that's called the spring ligament, and it's on this medial side here. It's the plantar calcaneo-navicular ligament. So it goes from the calcaneus to the navicular. And actually, the specific spot on the calcaneus, if you hear of this landmark right above where this little bead is, you see this little part right here? It's like a little shelf that sticks out as part of the calcaneus. And it supports the talus. So this part on the calcaneus right here, if you haven't heard of that before, it's called the sustentaculum tali because it sustains up the talus, <coughs> right? So it's like it's pushing the talus up. So it's just a little medial protuberance there on the calcaneus. Okay? And then you can you can copy that on your on your foot there on the medial side of the ankle. So you can see that that spring ligament or the plantar calcaneo navicular comes from the calcaneus at that sustentaculum tali and then it comes over here to the navicular. And then it sort of holds up the talus underneath there. But basically this is going to be the talus bone right here. And then the spring ligament is going across the flat from the calcaneus to the navicular. And then, we've already heard about before about the plantar fascia. And you can see it's not really a muscle, but it's basically connective tissue that just connects from the calcaneus out into the toes. Okay, so it goes all the way across here. And then obviously when the foot's landing like that, it's pulling on it. So constant pressure tugging on there is what's going to give you the plantar fasciitis. And like what they were mentioning is that the classical thing where somebody's going to complain with, pl with plantar fasciitis is they're going to say, my heel hurts. And especially the worst time that bothers me is when I first get up in the morning and I put my put step, first step down on your feet. Because basically at, at night, you know, the thing has started to relax. It's not being put, pressure put on it. But as soon as you put that pressure on your feet, it's going to irritate it. And when, when somebody had, gets orthotics as part of the treatment for it, you want to make sure that when they put their feet on the floor in the morning that they're putting them into their orthotics. Right? <coughs> trying to minimize the plantar fasciitis can be tough because it's constantly irritated. So you want to make sure that you minimize whatever's going to irritate it, including when you first put weight on your foot in the morning. 